One staple of the education system in the United States where I live is that there can be several generations who read the same books in high school. If you're able to get through the experience alive, oftentimes you part with those books at the end of the school year without a second thought back to them. If you're in a select group of nerds, however, you might just hang on to your copy of certain ones in case you want to revisit those characters later, perhaps in a setting that does not require you to test on what you've read, thereby enjoying the material a little bit more. Such was the case for me as I found myself hanging on to at least five of the books I was made to study in high school, only to revisit a few of them recently with my morning coffee. One such was a 1967 book by the then-teenage writer S.E. Hinton called The Outsiders that tells a story from the perspective of young ponyboy Curtis of his life as a poor orphan kid being raised along with his middle brother by their eldest brother. There are three sons. Where could I be going with this? They not only struggle with poverty, but they are also in a gang of sorts with other kids with similarly destitute lives who are actively rivaled by a gang of rich kids. The struggle between the Greasers and the Socias, respectively, along with some other issues, filled the bulk of the book, but I found myself paying more attention to the specific story of the three Curtis boys, Derry, Soda, and Pony Boy. And yes, friends who have never read this or seen the movie, those really are their names. It was around page 100 that it finally hit me why I was taking such particular interest. Pony Boy, the baby of the family, gets into a fight with eldest brother and guardian Derry, whereupon Derry smacks him and causes him to run away. After he and another young friend hide out due to an assumed crime the other boy committed, the Curtis boys are reunited in the hallway of a hospital. It's there when Derry sees his baby brother for the first time and embraces him. Soon, Soda Pop, the middle child, joins into the reunion. The eldest and youngest wind up getting into another fight toward the end of the book. This time, Soda is the one who gets up and runs off, making the other two work together to chase him down. When they catch up to him, Soda explains that he's tired of being in the middle of the two each time they fight. He tells Pony that Derry gave up everything to support the two of them and that Pony should appreciate it more. He in turn tells Derry that Derry needs to remember that Pony is still a 14-year-old kid that's going to make mistakes sometimes. By that time, they've already been to court to get Derry legal custody of the boys. To avoid any more spoilers than are necessary to make this video, I'll leave it there. If you've been around the Ponderosa podcast for a while, you might have figured out why the relationship, particularly between Derry and Pony, stood out to me, and even more so, why I'm making a video about it on a podcast channel about Bonanza. In the book and movie adaptation of The Outsiders, both of the Curtis parents are killed a year before the events in a car accident. In Bonanza, the three Cartwright sons all lose their mothers due to premature death, leaving Ben to be a single father. The most complicated relationship dynamic in Bonanza, as in The Outsiders with Derry, the eldest, and Ponyboy, the youngest, is the one between Adam, the eldest, and Joe, the youngest. Both Haas and Soda Pop are middle sons who often have to play both sides of the issues. So that scene in the hospital where Derry embraces Ponyboy and cries that he thought he'd lost him had me bawling. And the more I read, the more I stopped picturing Patrick Swayze and C. Thomas Howell, who play the parts in my favorite version of the movie, but rather Adam and Joe Cartwright. Had the situation been different on the Ponderosa, Adam may well have ended up having to fully raise Hoss and Joe. In the book, Daryl Curtis is described as hard and not smiling much, just as Adam was in the first few episodes of the show. Ponyboy is a bit absent-minded and has a way of losing his temper without taking time to consider how things really are. Sound familiar? Let me give a for instance. In their final argument in the book and movie, Derry gets on Ponyboy for not doing his schoolwork on time, leading to a screaming match where Pony says straight out that Derry wishes he'd just run off. It's harsh, but it's what Ponyboy really thinks, and we know this by his internal thoughts in the book. In the pilot episode of Bonanza, A Rose for Lotta, Adam finds Joe in the house playing with his fencing sword and proceeds to harp on him for having too much fun and not taking too much responsibility. Both of these eldest sons have to work harder than what they perceive their baby brothers do, and it bothers them. 
In Derry's case, it actually makes life harder as the two boys could be taken away from Derry and put into foster care at any moment. Of course, this isn't the case for the Cartwrights because they still have Ben, but for the grace of God go the Cartwrights. That is to say, The Outsiders gives a look at what might have been if the Cartwrights' sons were orphaned and not as well off financially. Still, even though Adam is not Joe's guardian or parent, he takes on the role of surrogate parent, leading to resentment of one for the other in several instances. In one such situation, Joe actually does run away, the same as Ponyboy, but for a different reason and a better outcome. In a house divided, Joe and Adam's differing political views caused them both to leave home, Adam doing so in order to get Joe to come back. Ultimately, it is Joe who brings Adam home once he finds out Adam left too. In The Outsiders, only after Ponyboy and a friend nearly die in a fire, where they saved the lives of some children, do the brothers reunite. That being said, Derry knows that his brother is presumably safe thanks to the knowledge of another friend who won't tell him where to find the boys, but assures him that they're doing okay. In A House Divided, the other Cartwrights have a pretty good idea where Joe is, too, but they allow him to come back on his own. Ben intervenes just a little. Adam's plan to draw Joe home by letting him know that he himself has left will work, in Adam's mind, at least. Joe seems to suffer the disconnect with Adam that makes him wonder if Adam doesn't love him, something that Ponyboy actually says outright about Derry in The Outsiders. Because Derry keeps it all together and has his emotions well hidden, it appears to Pony that Derry doesn't love him at all until that scene in the hospital hallway. While, as I stated earlier in this video, Adam keeps his feelings hidden much of the time, especially in the early years, we do see as soon as the pilot episode that he does show affection to Joe at times. After their pretty harsh fight in that episode, they embrace in the most outward showing of love for each other that the show ever does have between them. In another parallel to Bonanza, the relationship between Ponyboy and Soda Pop could be said to mirror that of Hoss and Joe. When Pony writes about his middle brother, he does so with so much love and admiration that it spills off the page. They're close in age and even share a room. When Derry and Pony have their first big fight before Pony runs away, Soda gets in the middle of it, causing Derry to turn and yell at him to stay out of it. This enrages Pony, leading to him screaming back at Derry in defense of Soda. Derry responds badly by shoving Pony in the movie and slapping him in the book. At the end of the day, the trio of brothers in each of these situations has love for each other, no matter how much they may bicker and even beat the snot out of each other. While this book did come out while Bonanza was still on the air, I cannot say that the author had any of this in mind when she was writing the characters. She goes so far as to say in a Q&A in the back of the book that these events were loosely based on friends she had at the time. I believe I can safely assume that these are just coincidences that only the mind of an obsessed Bonanza fan like myself could have come up with. Either way, I hope this video was entertaining and a case study of just how far we fangirls can go to see our boys reflected in pretty much anything. If you've read the book or seen the movie, what are your thoughts? Were there any similarities that I missed? If all of this sounds like a mad fever dream, you can tell me that too. I won't mind. On one condition. You have to subscribe to the channel before you can tell me that. Other than that, stay gold, my friends. Stay gold.